Hello everyone. So in this video we're going to take a look at some of the applications of uh, radicals and thirds that we saw in the previous video. Sorry I said it'll be part of the same one. I'm still coming to grips with uh, timing and recording videos. Uh, but uh, I hope I get better very quickly as I post more and more videos. As always I'll be really happy if uh, you could post any of your feedback in the comments. Um, tell me what you want, tell me what it is that you're looking for and I'll try and prepare videos on um, the topics that uh, that you guys want. But anyway, looking at some of the uh, basic applications of radicals and thirds. So let's start with A. Here I'm multiplying root 3 times root 6. It is the same root, so I'm allowed to multiply and pull it under one root, which will be which is then square root of 3 times 6 which is the square root of 18 and then I realize that I can actually write 18 as the square root of 9 times 2 because 18 can be expressed as 9 times 2 and then what I have is that 9 can be expressed as a perfect square of 3 so the square root of then 3 squared times 2 because 9 can be expressed as 3 squared and since I have a perfect square under a square root, I can pull it out of the root and make it 3 square root of 2. B is particularly easy. The moment I square a square root, I have the number inside. So the square root of 5 squared is simply 5. Looking at this, C. I have a 3 in front, but since it's a multiplication, I can combine it so that the two root 3's are together. So I have 3 times square root of 3 times square root of 3. I put brackets to indicate that it's this operation that I'm going to do first. Since it's multiplication, I can really do it in any order I please. I'm going to multiply the two root 3's with each other. When I do that, I realize that I have actually square root of 3 squared. And again, by the same logic that applied up here, square root of 3 squared is simply 3. So what I end up with is 3 times just 3, which is 9. D is slightly tricky, but easy. Um, in order to solve D, what you have to remember is since it's all multiplication, I can really do it in any order that I please. So what I choose to do is I choose to take all the numbers on one side, or at least have all the numbers together and have all the radicals together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this instead of 2 root 7 times 3 root 7 I'm going to make it 2 times 3 so the numbers are together times root 7 times root 7 so the radicals are together and this is actually 2 times 3 which is 6 and root 7 times root 7 becomes the square root of 7 squared like it did up here where root 3 times root 3 beca became root 3 squared and again the square root of 7 squared is simply 7 so I have 6 times 7 which is 42. And hopefully you see how simple and how straightforward this is if we know the rules and if we apply them consistently. Alright, coming to E, F and G. Again, I see that I have root 18 divided by root 2, which means I'm basically dealing with the same root here, so I can pull it under one root, make it 18 over 2, and the square root of that whole thing which I can then simplify and make it the square root of 9. And I know 9 can be expressed as 3 squared, so essentially what I have is the square root of 3 squared, which is 3. Coming to f, again, same root, I'm dividing, so I'm going to pull it all under one root, 18 over 6. Again, I can simplify. So I have the square root of 3. 3 over 1, but obviously we don't write the over 1. And the same logic here. So I have the square root of 12 over 3, which again I can simplify. So I have this 1 and 4. So I'm left with the square root of 4, which is 2. 
And so I think the biggest lesson that we learned here is that every time I have a square root of let's say any number a and I square that, the square and the square root cancel to leave me with a. Or if I have the square root of a squared inside, that's the same thing essentially. And they still cancel, the square root and the square still cancel to leave me a. That's probably something that you should have seen from the examples that we did here. We saw that there, saw that there, and here as well. All right, now looking at some further examples and simplification. Let's start with a simple one, 2 root 3 plus 4 root 3. I have the same radical, so I can simply add 2 plus 4 is 6. So I have 6 root 3 there. Similarly, 5 root 5 minus 3 root 5, again the same radical. So 5 minus 3 is just 2 root 5. Same radical here, so 1 root 2, let's say, plus 2 root 2 plus 4 root 2 is 1 plus 2 plus 4, 7 root 2. So far so good, hopefully. Let's look at how we can simplify some of these radicals that have bigger numbers. Remember, it's all about trying to express the given number as a perfect square because if I have a perfect square under the root I can pull it out of the root and simplify it. So let's start with a few easy ones before we go on to slightly bigger numbers. I look at 27 and I think well how can I best express 27 or can I express 27 at all as a perfect square or as a factor of a perfect square. I'm thinking okay 27 can actually be expressed as 9 times 3. So instead of 27, I write root of 9 times 3. And then I realize, all right, 9 actually is 3 squared. So I write this as 3 squared times 3, all of this under the root naturally. And then I see that I have a perfect square under a square root. And it's all multiplication. So I can then pull this out and have 3 root 3. 45. Again, how best can I express 45 so that I get a perfect square under the root and it's all multiplication? I could express 45 as 15 times 3, but that doesn't help me because neither 15 nor 3 is a perfect square. But I could express 45 as 9 times 5, and that's brilliant. Because then I have the square root of 9 times 5, and then 9 again can be expressed as 3 squared times 3. 5 obviously. Again, I have a perfect square under a square root and a multiplication which is perfect because these are the conditions under which I can pull the perfect square out of the root. So I have 3 square root of 5 in this case. Now with 80 it's a bit interesting. I'll hopefully show you two ways of doing it if I have enough space. I ask myself how best can I express 80 as a product of factors that are perfect squares? And if nothing comes to mind, I think, well, all right, if nothing com comes to mind, let me just try and break it down as best I can. So I'm thinking I can write 80 as 8 times 10, right? Obviously under the square root because we have a square root there. But neither of them is a perfect square, so at this stage I can really not pull anything out of the root. But I realize, well, maybe I can simplify this further. Maybe I can express the 8 as 4 times 2. And maybe I can express the 10 as 5 times 2. So instead of 8 times 10, I have 4 times 2 times 5 times 2. Obviously, the square root. And since it's a multiplication, I can really rearrange it in any order as I deem fit. I can multiply whatever I want. So this I'm actually going to write as the square root of... I'm going to combine the 2's together. So I have 4, then 2 times 2 will give me 4, and I already have a 5. This gives me the square root. 4 times 4 is actually 4 squared, right, times 5. 
et voila, I have a perfect square under the root and multiplication. So since I have multiplication and one of the factors is a perfect square, I can simply pull it out of the root and make it 4 root 5. Now, up here in green, I'm going to show you a slightly different way of solving it. Let's say I have root 80 like I did before. I could, if I know my times tables up to 16, realize that 80 can actually be expressed as 16 times 5. Yep, that's perfect, that's legit too. And then realize, well, 16 is actually 4 squared. So I have the square root of 4 squared times 5. And again, you see, I'm back to there. I have a perfect square under, the, under a root with multiplication. So I can pull that out and make it 4 root 5. Either way works. If you can come up with this immediately, that's great. If not, you can take your time, split it up, recombine the factors as you deem necessary. Um, as long as you get the final answer, the way doesn't really matter. All right. 108. This will be slightly more interesting. So I've chosen a nice light green to do it with. How best can I express 108 as a factor or as, yeah, as as factors that are perfect squares. I'm thinking 9 times 12. Yeah, that could work. 9 times 12 square root. And the 9 can already be expressed as 3 squared, right? But I can even express the 12 as 4 times 3. Yeah, that works too. Because now the 4 can also be expressed as 2 squared. So 3 squared times 2 squared times 3. So now I have two numbers that are perfect squares, so I can pull both of them out and express them as a product. So the 3 and the 2 both come out, the product stays, and the root 3, which is not a perfect square, stays inside the root. So I'm, I end up with 6 square root of 3. Some of you might be wondering why I chose to express 12 as 4 times 3 and not, for example, 6 times 2. Well, I could have, but 6 times 2 is not a perfect square, so I probably would have had to simplify it further until I got here. It just would have taken longer. By expressing 12 as 4 times 3, I immediately could see that 4 could also be expressed as a perfect square, and then I took it from there. Similarly, 96. Hmm, 96. Times tables tell me that 96 can be expressed as 8 times 12. So I'm going to write 96 as 8 times 12. And simplify further. 8 can be expressed as 4 times 2, right? Like I did up here. And 12 can be expressed as 4 times 3. All of this under the root. And again, since it's multiplication, I can rearrange, I can combine the way I think is best. So I'm going to combine the 4s together, which basically means I'm going to do it in this order. I'm going to say 4 times 4 times 2 times 3, all of this under the square root, right? Which can then be expressed as 4 squared. 2 times 3 is 6. Again, I have a perfect square under a square root and multiplication inside, so I can pull the 4 out make it 4 square root of 6. And again, for those of you who know their times tables up to 16, you would have realized that square root of 96 can also be expressed as 16 times 6, right? The square root of that. Again, realize that I have 16, which means I can express 16 as 4 squared, right? And again, pull it out of the root, I have 4 root 6. Essentially, the same thing, it's shorter if you know your times tables up to 16.